Hello, this is Wayland Chow. This is Intellectual Property Part D. In this part, we will look at trademarks. Here's a bunch of trademarks that you've probably seen before. They all represent uh, large, large consumer corporations. A trademark is a word or symbol or design that distinguishes one's goods or services from another's in the marketplace. Take, for example, the, the Apple symbol that you see there uh, in the middle uh, at the bottom, uh, the silver uh, white, uh, white trademark. If you see a product with that, with that symbol on it, you know that the, that the product is from the, the Apple uh, company that's based in Cupertino, California. But along with knowing that it comes from, from Apple, uh, there's a certain image, reputation, or, or, or brand that is associated with that trademark. Um, so with, uh, with the Apple trademark, uh, you might think that the product is, is high quality, well, well designed, well programmed, it's, uh, it's cool, it's fashionable. A lot of different things that are associated with with that brand and the and the image of of that brand. So in in that way, that's that's how a trademark is used to distinguish Apple's products from other electronics that are that are in the marketplace. There are three categories of trademarks. Most trademarks that 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 we are familiar with would be considered ordinary trademarks so these these distinguish goods and services with words or or design so just like that the the, the Google uh, uh, logo is is a combination of of design and and words because it uses certain fonts it has certain colors but it's also the word the word Google the second category is called certification marks so these marks demonstrate that goods or services meet us meet certain standards. So, so one example is where the phrase "recognized by the Canadian Dental Association" is used on on a box of toothpaste. We know that that toothpaste meets certain standards. It, it is of a certain is of a certain quality. The third category is distinguishing guises. So that that's where the 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 shape of the product or the package is used to 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 identify the goods. You know, somehow that shape shape or package is unique. So the one very famous uh, package shape is is the the hourglass shape of of a Coca Cola bottle. Now, uh, most recently, sound marks is another category of trademark. Uh, so this distinguishes goods and services with sounds and and the ability to trademark a sound arises from a case uh, involving uh, the the movie company MGM so they were successful in 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 being able to uh, trademark uh, the roar of the uh, MGM lion as you see as you see there How is trademark protection obtained? Trademark protection arises only after a distinctive mark is created and then that mark is actually used in association with the sale of goods or services. Now, registration is good and we'll explain why, but it's actually not required to obtain ownership of a trademark. But the advantages of registration are that it gives you trademark protection all across Canada for 15, for 15 years. And that, and that uh, trademark protection can be renewed indefinitely as long as the business continues to use the trademark. Another advantage of registration is that if, if someone does challenge the validity of, of a trademark, the burden is, is upon the challenger to disprove ownership of the trademark so the challenger has to show evidence that the that the registered owner is not the actual owner of of the trademark so with unregistered trademarks there's still protection but not as much there's still protection by way of 
being able to sue under the tort of passing off, but it's only with regard to the use of the trademark in the geographic area where the company has, a, has an established reputation. Let's look at a trademark owner's legal rights and, and especially rights with regard to trademark infringement. A trademark can be used by the owner itself in, in, in their own business, or a trademark can be sold to someone else, or it can be licensed for someone else, for someone else to use. Now, typically, in a franchising deal, let's say you're buying a, a, a Tim Hortons franchise, so you're the franchisee. Uh, in your franchise agreement with Tim Hortons, uh, Tim Hortons will, will give you a license to use their, their trademark, their Tim Hortons trademark, uh, in the operation of your, of your restaurant. With respect to unregistered trademarks, that trademark is protected only in areas of Canada where it is actually being used and has gained a market reputation. So it's only in those specific areas. It's not all of Canada. If there is a trademark infringement, an unregistered trademark owner can sue for the tort of passing off. So, so the tort of passing off requires three things. The trademark owner has goodwill or reputation in the name, mark, or logo. The defendant represented itself in a manner that resulted in misrepresentation or confusion to the public. And three, the trademark owner suffered or is likely to suffer harm. So the, those three requirements need to be met for that tort of passing off. Registration of a trademark gives the owner proof of ownership and exclusive right to use that trademark throughout Canada in respect of certain goods or services, even though there may be no Canada-wide use or market reputation. So, so that's, that's very different from an unregistered trademark. And that registration is valid for 15 years, but can be renewed indefinitely for further 15 year periods, as long as the trademark can, continues to be used and remains distinctive. So registered trademark owners can also sue for the tort of passing off, just like unregistered owners, but they can also sue for infringement uh, for, uh, for other things, such as unauthorized uh, use, uh, knockoffs, trademark dilution, unauthorized importation, and also confusing use of, of another mark in, in the marketplace. The remedies that are available when suing for trademark infringement uh, could include claiming damages for injury to reputation and goodwill of the trademark, suing for an account of profits earned by the infringer from the illegitimate use of, of the trademark. So you're forcing that infringer to pay over any illegitimate profits that it earned from, from, the, from the infringement. Another common remedy is injunction, ordering the infringer to stop the illegitimate use of the trademark. And the, the last possible remedy is forcing the infringer to deliver up the infringing, the infringing material that they've produced or that they, are, that they tried to, to sell or market.